<laughs> Hello everyone. How are you today? <laughs> so happy that you're able to join me. Um, I'm turning to God. You caught me in the middle of turning off my, my stuff on my uh, computer. Well, uh, comments are popping in. So maybe that means we'll have less problems uh, today. Uh, I did get a, a new computer set up. So maybe that will be part of the issue. Okay. Uh, don't know why they're showing up on the screen though, but hello everyone. Nancy's here, the Illinois sister, uh, Lay, uh, from Oregon, central Illinois, Pennsylvania. Fabulous. So it looks like we have, we've got 50 people already here. Holy smokes. Guess it's a popular topic. Everyone is interested about Daisy and Oscar. <laughs> so, um, we've been, uh, as many of you know, we had, uh, we've always had dogs. We've usually had one or two of them. Uh, one time we had three of them at one time. That was a little crazy. Uh, but we usually like to get rescues. And Australian cattle dog, Australian shepherd, border collie, high energy herding dogs. That's our thing. So our Bubba passed away. He was 15 and a half. So he passed away um, earlier this year. So, um, we wanted to uh, adopt a, a younger dog because Daisy's only eight, and we had to. Um, we of course the COVID nineteen uh, coronavirus came, so shelters were hard to uh, get to. So we got a. We did put our name on a list, and um, we will. We got a puppy. So in case you're wondering, in case you haven't seen the photos, this is Daisy and this is Oscar. <laughs> so um, get new pop puppies. You have to make new, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, a water bowl placemat because they share water bowls, different foods. Daisy's eight years old. She <laughs> was the runt of the litter. She was uh, supposed to be between 35 and 40 pounds because Bubba was 65 pounds. So we thought, well, we'll get Daisy. And she ended up being 20, 22 when she's a little overweight. So she's only 20 pounds. And Oscar is supposed to be somewhere between 40 pounds. But again, he was the runt of the litter. So we have no idea. Right now, yesterday, he was six pounds. I think he's like seven or six and a half today. So he's still tiny, but he's only nine weeks old. So he has a ways to go, but he loves to eat and loves to drink his water. So we figured, well, we got um, the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I got uh, Bubba, uh, Bubba and Daisy, Daisy and Oscar, and they need a new uh, placemat. And if you saw on the Embrilliance website, this, or on our page, this is the, the placemat that I made for them. So we're going to try popping into the software and seeing exactly how it is that, uh, we create this, this, uh, design layout. So just to let you know, this will be recorded in full, um, video available always. All of my past videos are all available on the Facebook page. So Facebook, so bubbles. If you click on the video link, I actually made a playlist. So, uh, for each program. So there's one on stitch artist, one on enthusiast, uh, one on essentials, alpha tricks. So each one has all the past and there's over a year's worth of videos in there. Some of them I do upload to YouTube, but my internet connection is not that great either. So it doesn't, they don't really go up there. However, I'm working on another option and we will see, see how that goes. Anyway, um, I see everyone's great, um, checking in, seeing how things are going. If you're going to ask me about the video, there's nothing I can do. I've checked my microphone. So if it's choppy, it is the internet connection. We do find that after it's been live for a while, it seems to smooth out. So it's like Facebook takes a little bit for it to uh, get used to us going live. I don't know. Anyway, we, let's pop on in the software and I'm going to show you exactly how I created this project. It uses a little bit of everything. So even if you just have essentials, there'll be some of the things that you'll be able to, um, use from this. And I'll, at the end of the broadcast, I'll let you know. So you'll, someone with essentials will be actually able to create this whole project 
on your own and for you. So I have to remember to tell you that at the end of the broadcast. So let's pop on in the software and see what we can do. So here is my design layout that we have here on our software. And if, as you can see, I have my, um, I was stitching this on the eight by 12 hoop. So that's the, um, I was stitching this on my multi needle, but whatever design that you decide to, um, stitch it on, that's where you want to choose. So you want to make sure you choose your hoop for the project you're working on. If you only have a six by 10 hoop, make, Choose a six by 10 hoop and you'll be able to create this whole, whole design layout. Uh, four by four hoop, you can still, if you have a multi-position hoop, you'll be able to do the same thing. So make sure you choose your hoop. And if you don't know how to choose your hoop, that's done in quick tip video number one. <laughs> so <laughs> excellent. All right. So here we go. I'm in the software and this is the entire project. So I just want you guys to know as you're looking at this, I have three lettering objects and that's because I wanted three separate fonts. I didn't, I wanted them to be different colors because I wanted that that's what I chose. So, and because Daisy's a girl and Oscar's a boy, I wanted to have two different fonts to reflect the personality and the ampersand that I chose in the middle didn't match. I didn't like the one from this one or the one from the other font. So I had to choose a completely different ampersand. So I have three different <laughs> lettering objects to create this one design. So let's get that started and I'll show you exactly how I created my three lettering objects and line them all up perfectly. So I'm going to go to a brand new design page. First thing I'm going to do is click on my big letter A. That puts the ABC in the center of the hoop. I'm going to go, let me see, make my text box bigger so you can see all the properties in the text box. Where it says ABC, I'm going to switch that. I'm going to type in Daisy, D-A-I-S-Y. Hit the enter key because I'm in single line text and you can only type one line and hit the enter key and boom. This actually says Daisy underneath there. So see, it says Daisy underneath there. You have to zoom in because I have block fonts and block fonts actually a nice versatile font. It stitches well at small, medium, and large. So it's a great font, but this didn't look like my daisy. So I decided to use, I went through the fonts that I have on, installed on this computer. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, I, this is a brand new computer. So the only fonts I have are the built-in fonts, Font Collection 1 and Font Collection 2 from Inbrilliant. So you can use any font that's in your font list. But for me, those, the, these are fonts that I decided to use. And one of the things I did when I'm looking at my font and I'm, I'm previewing it while it's selected, I'll go through here and choose a couple different ones to see what the style is, because maybe they, this is a nice one for Daisy. If this, this is Brittany, I think this is from font collection number one. If, if that's what you wanted, or if you want to, if you have different fonts from say the itch to stitch, itch to stitch or designs by Juju or creative applique, you can use any of these fonts, any of the fonts in your list. But I happen to choose, um, <laughs> sorry, I got distracted. Eileen said it wouldn't be the same without comments about the video. And before I start laughing to myself, I might as well say, yeah, I know every single time, a whole year, if you've been with me with a year, it would not be the same type of video if we didn't get someone didn't comment about the video. So, Hey, that means we got new people here, <laughs> but yes, Mar I saw Margaret from, um, Australia, Melbourne, my, my friend, Margaret, um, I wonder if Chris is on too. Chris usually watches as well. Um, as she mentioned that if you start watching the video for a while, it does kind of see to catch up. So, um, it was, <laughs> it's just kind of funny. Sorry. Had to share here. Um, <laughs> all right. So the font that I chose is Diana. And I'm pretty sure that's from font collection number two there. It's a built-in font because I can see it has no sewing machine needle. Your BX fonts have machine needles next to them. Native fonts don't. So I happen to, since it's a new computer, I'm using the ones that I have here now. So Diana is the font that I thought this looked very Daisy like. Now, one of the things I want to do is make sure or adjust my spacing because the letters are scripty. And you can use the slider bar here. 
and adjust them closer together. But if you notice that Y starts doing, it, it's adjusting them, but it's putting the Y too close already. So the slider bar is great for some fonts that are consistently, those fonts that have the swoopy things on the bottom, it sometimes the slider bar only goes so far and then you have to manually adjust anyway. So I'm going to show you a couple shortcuts or quick ways that I do this faster. I might, I make sure since the Y and the S look great, I don't need to move the Y anymore. So I'm going to put my mouse cursor on top of the letter S, that center square, click hold and on the triangle that's right below it and drag it over until that S is where I want it. And if you notice, it also dragged the Y. So I don't have to do them twice. Now I moved it as close as possible. So it almost looks like they're connecting because that's the style that I wanted for the I and the S to look that way. So to move the I, S, Y all at the same time, I select the center dot of the I, grab the lower triangle of the I, and now I can move this all the way over. And I'm overlapping them just a bit so that they look scripty because this font allows it. But I didn't, I don't want that Y any closer because it's going to look weird. Now in your, when you have a lettering object and you've overlapped those letters, you want the essentials function of remove hidden stitches to kick in because you want the extra letter, the extra stitches of the A that are covered by the I to be removed automatically. Same with the I, that extra stitches that was underneath the S, if they're completely covered, and some of them are, some of them aren't, but you know, the ones that are completely covered, I want them removed. To verify that they will be removed, we're gonna to go to the Stitch tab. So I have my lettering object selected and I'm gonna click on the Stitch tab and there's an option here that says Remove Hidden Stitches. As long as that is checked, any of the letters that are completely covering the stitches of another letter will be removed automatically, okay? Now, while we're here, the letters that I'm stitching are rather large. This was done eight by 12. So my letters are a good, um, let's see, this is 34. So that's about an inch and a quarter tall. So they're pretty decent. If you're stitching small letters, and you don't want, and that, that might have tiny jumps in them one to another, and you're going to be wanting to clip those jumps, uncheck the option for nearest point. If you do that, if you uncheck nearest point and you have small lettering, the jumps could be further apart from each other and more likely to get trims at the machine. So Nearest point is really only when you have small letters that are really close together. And unless you're looking at it like this, which you wouldn't be doing on a chest and you're going to notice that jump, that's when you want that nearest point checked. Okay. So bigger lettering, I just uncheck it and I don't have to worry about it. Everything else I leave the same for this project. I don't have to group this. I don't have to do anything with so this. My daisy is pretty much done. So let's, I'm going to just whoop the. My mouse, I'm using my Mac mouse. Anyone that has a Mac mouse, <laughs> it's just a little crazy. So I'm, Daisy's done. I'm gonna move it out of the way so that because I'm gonna bring in another lettering object. I'm gonna bring in Oscar next. So when I wanna move this out of the way, I need to make sure that my mouse cursor is on the stitches. Can you see where the point of my cursor is? There's my arrow. And I put the cursor on the stitches, not on the green dot, not in the white space, on stitches. Doesn't matter what stitches, just make sure they're on stitches. Because now when you left click and hold, you can move this anywhere you want. But if you click on the green box, that's only going to move that one letter. If you click in the white space, nothing happens. So your mouse has to be on stitches. Okay? Enough on that. Before I go any further, so I don't have to do this again, I'm going to go and hit the save button here at the top. And it's going to ask me, where do I want to, what do I want to call this? I'm going to call it Facebook Live and hit save. And it will save my, my file. So I'll never have to do this again. Okay. So now we got to make Oscar. So I'm going to click on the big letter A. 
that puts ABC in the center of my hoop and it remembers the last font you used, which can be a time saver. If you're making a whole bunch of things in all the same font, that's great. But this is where I'm gonna type in Oscar, O-S-C-A-R, oops, R, hit the enter key. And Oscar's a boy and that's not a boy font. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna choose Mel Script. And that's a font from Font Collection 2 as well. And I just thought that that was just kind of funky looking. So uh, that's the font I chose. Now, I wanted to make sure if I had adjusted my spacing on this and it decided that it was too close together or you're using your spacing and you don't like this, see that's, that's too close together, you can always reset it back to normal by clicking on this reset button here. Uh, looks a little different on Windows, but it's the same. It's the button to the right hand side of the slider bar. And it looks like something's there. So you click on that and it puts it back to the defaults. So that's my Oscar. Now, if I wanted to change his size, now I, um, I, I would do that because I want to make sure they're both about the same size. So I'm looking at the Oscar and I look here at the bottom and do you see where it says it is the 85? That's the width. And the 25.9, that's the height. So my daisy height, now that's also including the Y here. So I have to be really careful because this height says it's 34.2. So that doesn't really tell me much. So, but I want I want that O and the D to be about the same size. So I'm gonna show you a, a, a trick. Whoops, that's this magic mouse. Okay, I'm gonna show you a trick. First of all, I want to put these both on the, I'm going to use that grid line here at the bottom. So I'm putting this, my Oscar on my hoop line and I'm going to select Daisy and I'm going to move Daisy. So she's on the hoop line. And I want to make sure that the top of the D and the top of the O are about the same height because that's a good way for me to judge at the same size. I put my mouse cursor on a hash mark, a um, measurement mark from the ruler at the top, left click and hold my mouse. And do you see what happens to my mouse cursor? It turns into a, it looks almost like an hourglass, but it is the registration line. Okay. And do you see the dashed line I'm bringing down? We call that a guideline. So if I take that guideline and put it at the top of the D and release it, I can see that the top of the D and the top of the O are pretty darn close. So for these two fonts, I don't really have to do any adjustments. But if you're using other fonts that are different and you have to resize, like BX fonts or something else, now this you can use that guideline because you know that the bottoms are, are aligned there, the tops. And if I grab this and I just made it just a little bit bigger, there we go. Oh, I'm... I'm going to have to get rid of this mouse. <laughs> the zoom on the mouse is driving me batty. Okay. So, and there's no, I didn't find a way to turn that off. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I should have a sip. <laughs> but hopefully, give me a thumbs up if you like that guideline thing. Just to let me know that you got that, that tip and trick. Because I think it'll be really helpful um, when we try, when you try lining things up to use an extra registration line. And before someone asks, you can put multiple ones. So if I grabbed another one, whoops, that's the same one that grabbed it. Put my mouse cursor back up here. I can grab another one and bring another one down here. So I can have more than one this way. And if you want to get rid of it, so now I have two guidelines. You want to get rid of one of these, click hold and drag it off the screen. Okay, so you can put one there. And you can also bring them over from the side. So way over there. So you put your mouse cursor on the left side ruler, left click and hold, and you can drag it going this way. So if you need to, you know, line things up and you want to put them in some specific spots, like in, say you have an in the hoop project and you want something right in that corner and you want to make sure it's like right evenly and put on both sides, use your guidelines. They're awesome. They are on this design page. They're on this design page and they're saved in your BE file. So when you close this BE file and you open it back up again, it will still have those guidelines in there. But if you open a new design page, you have to put new guidelines in. Okay?
Hopefully that makes sense. So I got, and I got guidelines all over the place now. <laughs> and one quickie thing, if, in case you can tell, the cross here, this is the center of my hoop. That is a little tiny, tiny dash line and you can't move those. Those are permanent. The guidelines are a little further apart. Okay, so it's easy to tell that this one can be moved and when it, you put your mouse cursor on her and you can move it, but this one here, you can't move it because that's the center of your hoop. Cool. Now, I never want to do this again. So I'm going to go up here and I'm just going to hit the save button. <laughs> as soon as I get to a spot I never want to do again, I save. Okay, so I have my, and my Daisy and my Oscar. And I may just move Oscar just a little bit over because I'm going to put an ampersand in here. So I'm going to click on my big letter A. And it remembered Mel script. And I typed in the shift seven, which is my ampersand. And I didn't like that ampersand for matching both of them. So I went up here and I went through all my fonts. And I think that, let's see, Diana was the one I used for Daisy. And Brittany was the one. I thought this was kind of, yeah, I thought it matched, okay? And then you, <laughs> whoopsie. Yeah, but the the magic mouse is going to magically disappear. I'm going to have to get myself another one. All right, so now I'm going to move this up here and put this guys in this one. And as I'm looking at it, that ampersand does not match. So I'll match the size. So I'm going to go move it so it's a little bit bigger. And I have my Daisy and my Oscar. Isn't that lovely? Now I wanted them to be three different colors. So to change the, the colors, I'm going to, well, I know that this is object number one is Daisy. Object number two is Oscar. Object number three is the ampersand. So if I click on my color chip, click on here, I can go in and choose a new color. Whoops. Click OK. Go to Oscar. Click on the color chip. Let's move this up here. Oscar is going to be a blue, click OK, and Daisy will just make Daisy pink because Daisy likes pink. I know Daisy's colorblind, but she likes pink. So that I have my three different colors. <laughs> Highly recommend trackpad for Mac. Well, oh, an external trackpad maybe, me trackpad. I, my Mac is over there, so if I can't, it's not near my camera. <laughs> so I, I would put the, oh, I guess that's a touchpad, trackpad. I'll have to look at that. Um, I have a Logitech mouse and I have a Kensington mouse and I have a, a I have other mice. I just didn't have time to put it on this computer. So I'm stuck with the magic mouse. Magic mouse is going to magically disappear. <laughs> All right. So now I have my ampersand in here and I'm going to go, um, I can either hit command S on my keyboard or hit the little save button. I'm just saving my work so I never have to do it again. So for this, what I've done here so far, this is all essentials type stuff, okay? Now, I wanted the paw print. And as I mentioned, for those of you that are still watching, I am going to be giving you guys my paw print. So if you have essentials, don't freak out. Um, I'll, I'll give it to you. I'll show, tell you where it's gonna be. You'll be able to get it. <laughs> but for those of you that have stitch artists, I'm gonna show you how easy it was for me to create it. So you can even do this in level one. So I'll just be in stitch artist level one. So you can actually see how I did this. I'm gonna go to my library function. Okay, so this is merge a design from the library. This is where all of your outlines for stitch artists are located. So I wanted the little paw print and I think it's under shapes too. I knew it was under shapes too because it's the one that has the bones in it. Because wouldn't the dog bones be cute on the bottom too? Well, that one has the bear paw, which is going to be a puppy paw. I don't, there might be a difference. Maybe, I, I don't know, but that's what I'm going to use. I thought maybe puppies had five toes, but mine only has four toes on here. So I, I need to go check. Um, uh, if you want five toes on your, on your bear paw, you can easily add another one, but I'm just, just four because it's only, I'm shrinking it down really, really tiny and putting a whole bunch of them across the bottom. Uh, no one's paying attention to the number of toes, or I'll just say we have bears. <laughs> So the bears <laughs> came to visit, okay? So I used this guy from my, from the shapes, brought him in and I wanted to make him small because I knew I wanted a whole bunch of them across the bottom, 
Okay. The other thing I knew, and I'm going to zoom in on this so that I can see what I'm working on. Okay. I kind of want, I wanted the, to move the little toes around. I wanted them to be um, closer in so that because they were so close to each other, they were either going to be touching one another or touching the um, outline here. So I'm kind of customizing this, which is, I don't, I don't know if there's five toes on a dog. We'll have to check that out. Dogs have five toes on the top or do they have four? If they had five, then I would just copy and paste and add another one and move it in here. But either way, I reshaped these. I just kind of played around with them. So they were looked a little different. And I think I also made this guy a little bit bigger. You know, you can, you can reshape these as much as you want, play around with them or just leave them exactly as they were to begin with. But I was just trying to create something, create, because this is just a little outline design. And even if I stitch this on my single needle, I didn't want to cut jump stitches. So I was thinking if I digitized this so it would run and do this one, then this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. And I wouldn't have a single jump stitch. <laughs> I mean, that was my plan. I am rather lazy with this. So even though the toes are a little not, perfectly even. This is so small. No one's got their nose down there. Daisy and Oscar don't care. <laughs> so I was just working it out so I wouldn't have to trim any stitches. Okay. That's how I was doing it. So I already said you my stitching order. This one was going to be first. And then this one I wanted to be second. So I need to make sure that I move this one up above this one. So this one's first, this one's second. This one's going to have to get moved up. So it's in between there. And then we want, nope, that one, let's just move that one and say move last. So I've set my stitching order of these, even though they have no stitches yet, that it's going to come in and stitch one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Any little tiny jump in between these two is not going to matter. I'm going to select these guys all at one time. I'm going to click on my run stitch because that's what this is going to become. They're not, they're lines, but they're going to become runs. I'm going to go to my run stitch option here. And, oh, Pam says dogs only have four toes and the dew claws, but you can only see the four toes in a paw print. Thank you, sister. <laughs> I was, you know, I was thinking they, they obviously don't have a thumb, <laughs> but they might have, oh, the little dew claw up here at the top. <laughs> okay. Anyway, or so we, this is, this is my, what my paw print looks like. <laughs> and it's be, this way because I don't want any jump stitches. I don't want trim any stitches. Okay. Now I also want this, I change it to be, I selected all of them at the same time. So they're all the same type of stitch. I don't have to choose it one by one. I'm going to go to type of stitch and change it into a bean stitch. My stitch length, I'm going to move that down probably a little bit shorter. All right. I don't know what that was about. Well, we'll deal with that later. Privacy issues. Well, hopefully you guys can still see what I'm doing. Except I got out. Oh, let's. All right. <laughs> don't we love computers? How they work here? <laughs> I just wanted to be a little shorter stitch length with the bean stitch here. Length 2.3, three passes. Now, while these are selected here, if I turn on my jump stitches, let's go to view and let's say jaw, draw jump stitches so that we can see. It actually wants to jump from this point to this point, from this point to this point because of where the starts and stops. Okay. So if I have this selected and I go to my create mode, there is an option that says auto entry exit. And when you choose this option, and you have all these things selected because I only have this one paw print. Choose auto entry exit. You see what happened to my jump stitches? They all disappeared. And that's because on each individual object, it moved them automatically. So I didn't have to drag them around. It moved the start here, the stop to here, which makes sense because it wants to start the next one. So it moved the start here and the stop here. Yeah, software's pretty slick there. So I now have my bear paw or my dog paw as we have decided. Dogs have the four little toes and he's ready to go. Now, 
And Sabrina says, if it were a bear paw, it would have claws. Ah, yes. Ooh, I got a great face. <laughs> I froze on my screen for a while. <laughs> but yes, yes, you're right. We have a bear that visits us every so often in our, and you, we can tell uh, because he does have the claws. <laughs> it's a, it's a, not a grizzly bear in Alaska. Sabrina, yes, you have grizzlies up there. Well, you might have black bears too. I don't know. But we only have black bears here. They're vegetarians. They just eat scrub oak. And that's okay. <laughs> All right. And they also eat watermelon rinds. <laughs> I know that they come to visit when it gets really hot in the summer. Yeah, They visit our compost pile. Because I always throw my watermelon rinds out there. And they clean them all out. So anyway, I digress. All right. So you all hopefully saw I have my one paw. And I've connected all these. Now, one thing to pay attention to, I showed you how to select letters and move letters around. If you happen to click on this bare paw, like this toe here, it only selects that toe because I'm clicking in this design page here. And if I click on here, and that means I can accidentally move this, even if I go into select mode, Okay, even if I only select one of these guys, it only selects one of them, doesn't grab all of them. So once I have my paw all connected the way I want it to, these ready to go stitching, and I have him selected here, I select the whole thing, I go up to my edit menu and I choose to group them. So this design is now going to be grouped just like any design that you merge in as a stitch file. It's automatically grouped. Well, I'm grouping the design that we created. Okay. That means when I click on my toe, I get the whole design. Now, if I wanted to go back and adjust any of the digitizing stuff, I'd click, I can click on here and still get back to the individual digitizing functions or just move this one toe by itself. Not a problem. But the group allows me to click in this area so that it's all together. Okay. So I have my, my paw digitized, right? So I'm going to hit command S, save it because I never want to do that again. Oh, I got this. I have this swimming, um, spiraling thing. All right. He's back. He's back. Okay. So, um, I have my paw here and I now need to make more. So evil, evil. First of all, I'm going to select him and I'm just going to go and copy and paste him so that I now have two and I'm just going to stagger them just a little bit. So I have my two little bear paws. I'm going to select both of them together and I'm going to rotate them so that they're going this way. I'm going to move them all the way over to here. And if I just have essentials and I, cause you're, I'm going to give you this little paw print. Okay. So if you just have essentials, you don't have stitch artists, you'll be merging in your design. Using the merge stitch file here, with here at the button, merge in your paw print, copy paste, you get two, and then you would continue to copy and paste and put more in there and keep moving them along and you'll be able to fill up your border. Those of you that have enthusiast, okay, I'm going to have both of these guys. So I'm going to make sure I select them both because they're both together and I'm going to just move them over. So a little bit here and I'm just looking where the Y is so that I don't have to worry about them being too far. I don't want to have them there. And I'm going to, I want to instant repeat them across my screen. So while they're both selected, I'm going to go to my utility menu, choose instant repeat. And I want to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's about perfect. <laughs> now, if you wanted them further apart, you can adjust your st your staggering, your horizontal distance. I, I just wanted them even just so that, um, but if you wanted them further apart, however, if you notice, once you go further apart, they're not going to fit in the hoop anymore. So although down here, look at that, this will fit in the hoop. Watch if I change my distance one more click, 
get the red thing. See the red thing right down there? That means that this, I'll have to either remove one of the toes, one of the walking paws, or I just go back one click. So even though it looks like this bar here, it looks like it's not gonna fit, this tells me it's gonna fit. So why not? I got, I have eight there. I'm gonna keep my eight there and I'm going to click okay. While it's still selected, I'm, since I have enthusiast, I'm going to, where it says this um, center part here, the one that says, uh, tw the one here at the top, because this is the one that's going left to right. You see that, where it says set center value? And it's, this is the distance between left to right, and it's looking at the center of this selection. This says 12.43, because that's 12.43 millimeters past that way. If I change this to zero, and hit the enter key, it centers it without moving it up and down. Because if I hit the center button, you know, the center and hoop button over here, this is, oh, which is, or this black one here. Oh, got it. That's not supposed to be black because I have to get that looked at. Anyway, if I hit the center button, now it's center in the whole hoop. But because I have enthusiasts, when it was able to do that instant repeat, the center precise positioning, that's the center of the selection and it didn't move it up or down, it just moved it left or right. Carrie asked, does it always default to repetition to the right? Uh, yes, it has to start someplace and it's so it's gonna start here and repeat in that direction. Um, I don't know if you can do negative values, but either way, that's, yes, it's going to all um, always repeat that way. Okay, so I have this done. Now I want to, I don't want to do it again, right? Why would we want to do it again? <laughs> I have it all selected. I can see it's still selected here on my screen. So while it's still selected, I'm going to go hit copy and paste. It put a whole other one down there. I'm going to flip it so it's going in the other direction right here. Put my mouse cursor on stitches and move it up here until it's about where I want to go up and down this way. And I can look at my top here where it says, see where it says 0.49. I can just change that to zero, hit the enter key. And it's now centered in my hoop from left to right. And voila, we are done. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> He's so cute. That's just so, that's, that's how I did my little project there. Um, Jorita, you have to, it says she has to remember that. I bet that had to do with the grouping. Yes, because when you're digitizing is, um, when you're digitizing, it doesn't group it automatically because grouping causes other things. You want to be able to select the individual functions here. But once you have your design done, you want to group the whole design. And Pam says that little black thing has been driving you nuts. Well, you know, <laughs> if it, wasn't happening here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to tech support. So I'm going to go on brilliance.com and contact tech support and send them a picture and tell them, Hey, this is the latest update. So even if you think it's your computer, don't be afraid to ask them because that's not normal. That's, um, I'm sure it has to do with the new 4k Mac Catalina, whatever, uh, displays. It probably has something to do with a magic mouse for all I know. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Nothing to a magic mouse. I just want to blame everything on that magic mouse right now. Um, it probably has to do with the something. So I'm just going to let them know and maybe they'll work on it. You know, and let the, no one tells them. Um, I know it was fixed at one time. So maybe it's there's an update that broke it again. You know, Apple and everybody updates stuff. So anyway, um, I'll be letting them know. So hopefully there'll be a new update that fixes that little issue. Anyway, 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 wasn't that cool? I mean, uh, neat little project, quick and easy. Copy paste is an easy way of doing it in essentials. If you have enthusiasts, why not use that instant repeat because it will do it automatically evenly for you. You know, if I was doing the copy and paste, one thing to, to know when you do a copy or paste or you have, let me see, let me try and do this. I can do this, hold on. I'm gonna select these two and I'm gonna hit Command C, New design page, command V. Okay. So I have these two. So these two here are selected and I do a copy and a paste. If I have, if I put my mouse cursor on it and I, and I want to move it, 
that will move it, you know, randomly types, you know, as far as, um, a spacing. But if you say, oh, while it's selected, you want to move it a little bit more to the left or to the right, you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard so that you can space them while they're selected either up or down without having to rely on mouse controls. So, um, uh, yes, I'm on a Mac and Maria says it works on Catalina. So Maria, if you're saying that if you're on Catalina and you don't have that little square, for the button, the button works. This says center. If I click this, it centers the design hoop. It works. It just looks bad. So if Maria Maria's saying it works, if you don't have that on Catalina, see, that's just, uh, everyone has um, different computer setups. That's why we have to contact support and let them know that it's not working on my computer. <laughs> and the last questions on it. Um, is there a way to micro move objects? Um, there is with a keyboard command. I forgot it's there it's in the manual under um i uh, there is there i think there's a keyboard you hold down the um there's a keyboard function that you hold and i don't remember what the keyboard thing is but i just using the arrow key on the keyboard is yeah that's micro enough for me but if you want to do even more micro than that um check the manual or check the online help um, I don't know if it's called micro movements, but it's uh, probably, I would search on keyboard and movements or contact support. They'll be able to tell you. Um, it's not something I do all the time. So it's not an enthusiast. I mean, if you want to do micro movics, if I knew I wanted to only move this one more point, I can just type in uh, point two and it will actually move it <laughs> exactly. I you move it at a hundredth of a millimeter, which is micro, micro. So Okay. Oh, you don't have to keep looking, Carrie. Contact support, give them a message and say, um, oh, Kellen says control plus plus the arrows. So um, so if you hold down the control key on your keyboard and you do arrows, well, it's not working for me. It's, I don't see it working, but I'm also on, I, who knows? Um, option shift does that. Let's see. Where's the option? Option shift. Oh, there you go. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Maria. <laughs> you know, if you ever wanted to know, but see, and you, and how do I know it's working is because I'm looking at my, my up here where it says uh, precise positioning. So option shift, and you can use the arrows to micro move it exact one, one tenth of a millimeter at a time. Now that is... That's micro moving things. Um, a lot, most of the time, what I'm trying to do is making sure like the bottoms are lined up exactly. There's a nice video on using the precise positioning um, function on Enthusiast because that's like my always my go-to. So check out that video. It's on the Embrilliance YouTube channel under Enthusiast. And I may have to, uh, but thanks about that micro. And we know what it's uh, Windows. Uh, Helen, control plus arrows. That may be Windows. And then option shift arrows. Fabulous. <laughs> Aren't these after hours cool? <laughs> I'm just so excited. Okay. Uh, anyway. Okay. And Susan said that the black square appeared recently. Yes. So if it if it's there for you, make sure you guys write to support because if if it's there for some and not there for others, there's something specific between uh, different computers. So you just never know um, what's going on there. Anyway, guys, that was fun. It's quarter to seven. I have to go have dinner. I have to go. No, we already fed the Oscar. Um, so we don't, <laughs> don't laugh at the Oscar. He is just, he is adorable. Um, but he gets walked and, um, he gets fed <laughs> when he has to. So he's just adorable. Six pounds. And that's the Daisy. She's eight years. She's going to be nine years old this year. Wow. Nine years old. Well, okay. So, uh, Susan said, very good. Yes. Quick and easy with the centering and repeat function and the adjustment jump stitches. Thank you. Uh, for me, the mouse is easier. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, use the best tool. If, it, if using the mouse works for you, if, if arrows, keyboards, just the, the one thing I can't stress enough as far as doing is saving often. Okay. 
If you can't remember to hit the floppy disk save button on the menu bar, hit command or control S on your keyboard. You saw that I saved multiple times on this project because you just don't want to lose your work. So hopefully that works. Anyway, guys, um, that's all for me today. And just to let you know, let's see. Um, I've been getting orders in. Everyone has gotten back to me on on what? For my um, adventures into Atlanta, that's been rebooked. Houston's been rebooked. Nashville's still on. And I think we're going to keep Nashville on because um, we're opening up. Things are getting back to normal again. So we're going to be doing uh, Nashville in uh, July. And then D uh, Denver. I had a huge run. Huge run on, on Denver past couple weeks. Uh, awesome. So... Uh, I'm just glad, glad, glad it all worked out. Uh, Julia says she usually watches the videos two to four times. Yes, I, tr I jam pack lots of information in here. You know, sorry guys. <laughs> I just, I, I remember something and I have to share it. <laughs> Even though I have my little checklist of what I want to tell you about, I always end up telling more. And that's not bad. That's not a bad thing because the more often you hear these tips and tricks, the more familiar your software becomes and then it's easy to use. So, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's the whole point of doing these things and I'm excited. So, before I forget, this project with this design is going up on, or I'm giving you the paw print, sorry. Paw print for the design is going to be on the Embrilliance project blog tomorrow. So even if you just have Essentials or Essentials and Enthusiast, or if you have all three of them, you should go right away and follow this project step by step. Uh, use your own fonts. If you don't have font collection one or two, um, use your own BX fonts, size them, use the registration lines um, to guidelines to help you line things up and go from there. But watch the, pro make sure, let's see. So it's going on the project blog tomorrow. It will be announced on the Embrilliance Facebook page. So make sure you follow that to get those. Um, have fun, enjoy, play with your software. And thank you for spending some time with me today. I had a great time. It seemed like we didn't have too many issues. I'm glad it sounds like the video started coming in okay. And yay, we got 91 people here. Wow, that's pretty exciting for a Monday night. So anyway, all right, I'm stopping talking. Take care, guys. Have a great night and I will see you online. Bye.